Good afternoon and welcome to today's conversation. Today we look at trust. And in our conversation today, we, were go we are going to begin by looking at the definition of what trust is and we're also going to look at a guiding scripture. So we'll get right into it. So I have my laptop here and I have some notes which will be helping me go through this conversation today. So trust is said to be, this is by the Oxford Dictionary, if you just Google the meaning of trust, it is a firm belief in the reliability, the truth, or ability of someone or something. I'll read that again. Trust is a firm belief in the reliability, the truth, or ability of someone or something. And today we're looking at trusting God, learning how to trust God. So I am not a pastor. I am just merely sharing with you from my personal experiences how I learned to build trust in God. Now the backstory to a lot of my <laughs> stories is the fact that I failed a lot at school. Okay, and in those moments is when I was forced to build a relationship of trust with God. When you have a feeling of I've done my best, so what is this? What does this mean? Am I not good enough? Am I not worthy? It was in those moments that I had to learn to trust in God. And one of the scriptures that carried me through that I will be reading as well is from the book of Proverbs and it's Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6 and as you know we are in our 21 days we've done six days today of our intention six five six days of our intentional alignment and we've been going through the book of Proverbs yesterday we're in chapter 15 and today we'll be in chapter 16 that said let's get into the guiding scripture for today and it reads trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So first things first, when we are on the journey to success, it feels like a lot of what is going to be achieved depends solely on us because you do a lot. An example of intentional alignment or everyday living for those people that that is their everyday lives is you wake up, some people wake up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., you do your reading, you do your meditation, you do your workout, you do your planning, your to-do list, stick with them. So at the end of it, you feel like a lot of what you will achieve depends entirely on you. And so you find that your trust in God sometimes is a bit shaken, right? But it's important to remember, and this is why these days of intentional alignment are important, because we are trying to surrender our plans to God so that he can guide us where we should go okay so when we talk about learning how to trust God the first most important place to begin is knowing God through his word that's the most important thing so when you are a believer your entire life is in service to God and where he is leading you right and Sometimes we forget that every desire that we have, yes, the way the Bible tells us that in the book of Psalms, that when God, he said he knew us even before we were knit together in our mother's wombs, right? That's how intimately God knows us. And he knows us, he says he knows even the number of hairs on our head. Something, God knows us so well that it's not even in a way we know ourselves okay that's how deeply god knows us sorry that's lind he just came through the window our, our new stray cart which we're which we kept we kept and we're taking care of so trusting god is knowing that the person who created us knows us better than we know ourselves right you don't know the number of hairs on your head but god knows you don't you have no idea what your heart looks like you have no idea what your intestines look like or anything about you on the inside but god said i knew you he even knit us together 
and if you've ever seen the process of knitting you know that it's a process that requires patience and it's, it's it can even be a bit intricate but god knit us together with such precision that he knows us so well so when you the point of trusting god the point of trusting god is understanding that he knows me better than i know myself and that he has a purpose and a plan for me right so trusting god starts by you knowing him and how can we know god by studying his word knowing what he says right even the scripture we have read says trust in the lord with all your heart it it already says that trusting can it speaks to the fact that trusting can be a very difficult virtue to live out and that's why he says trust him with all your heart okay with everything you are and do not lean on your own understanding why like i have said our understanding is limited even our understanding of ourselves like i have said god knows the number of hairs on my head go away Lind. god knows the number of hairs on our head but we don't right so that's why we can't lean on our own understanding for our own lives and we have to know that god means well Many times we treat God, God like he's out to get us and he doesn't have our best interest at heart, but he does, right? So he asks us not to lean on our own understanding because our vision for not just the future, even for now, is very limited. But God is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything that we know. So when he encourages us to trust him, it's because he, he sees the future, he sees the past, even as far back as we do not see. And that's why it is important for us to not lean on our own understanding. And what does he say? In all your ways, acknowledge him. In everything we do, acknowledge him. And he will make our path straight. Now, the tricky thing about trusting God is every time we go to God in prayer and we're trusting him for something, like, oh, Lord, I'm trusting you for a job, right? We go with, for instance, a timeline, right? I hope to get this job by next week. And it needs to be at the soonest possible time because, Lord, you know I need this job. I need to take care of my family. And then God is not exactly saying I will give you what you want when you want it. He says I will make your path straight. Even when you look at the scriptures in the Bible that talk about um, I will grant you the desires of your heart, it is always preceded or for the ones that i have read let me not say all because i can't say i've read all the verses on that the ones that i have read they are always preceded with the fact that god wants us first to align with his will right so god wants us to be aligned with his will and then he will give us the desires so like i had said we the, the creation process of humanity was an, was an intimate one. It was a very personal one to God, even the creation of you and I, right? So he said he knew everything that, that we would be, everything that we would desire, and he placed these things on our hearts. Now, granted, because we are fallen humanity, there are a lot of things that go into extremes, but there's nothing that takes God by surprise because he is sovereign. He is all-knowing. He knows everything we desire. And there's things he placed in our hearts. Even the, the desire to be successful, he placed it because he knows if my daughter is blessed, the world changes. Orphans and widows are taken care of. People who are in need are taken care of. And that is why also we're here. So if you have a desire to be successful, perhaps God placed that into your heart. And then, yes, granted, there are some people who take it too far and it's greed and it's just about them. And we saw in the New Testament when God cut short uh, the, the life of a man when he says, yes, let me drink and be merry, right? But God does place these desires in our hearts. And when we align with with his word and where he would like us to go he blesses these things proverbs 10 verse 22 i think you know he gives wealth and adds no sorrow to it so there's a lot of things that 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 go into knowing god right so we have to know god i don't know where it is keep quiet yeah so 
Yes, so it's important for us to align our will with God and understand that God is not out to get you. And if he placed a desire in your heart, the question in these 21 days that we're going through, we need to know, are these desires aligned with God's will? Are they greed-led or are they God-led? And also understand that yes we may have these desires but when they align to god's will they will not always come to pass when we want them to come to pass but we have a duty to do our part to ensure that we don't use the kiss you know how the danger with with with, with i find with a lot of believers is sometimes we're like oh it didn't it didn't come to pass because it was god's will but we also have the responsibility to do that which we need to do to ensure that that which we have set out actually comes to pass but there are times as well when we have done all that we can in our own power in her own power and it doesn't come to pass because at the time god has said no not, not just now right so that's what it is about knowing god through his word what is he saying about where we are supposed to be going and what we are supposed to lint has such bad timing right right now is when he should be coming into the house to do this yeah so we should be aligning with god's word and what he wants to do and understand that sometimes even despite our best efforts what we want to do will not always come to pass not because we haven't given it our best but it's not god's timing right and it also doesn't mean that we will not go through difficult times it's let me give an example of let go away an example of daniel and and the lion's den right he was a child of god he trusted but it didn't stop uh, the king putting him in the den of lions it didn't stop him being thrown into you know the the fiery furnace so that's sort of a way we need to understand that trust doesn't mean that everything is going to be okay when we want it it just means having a firm belief in who in who we believe in and that is God and that he does work things for our good that said it takes us into a smooth transition into the next point which is trusting God is not a standalone virtue so sometimes we're like oh you know I'm trusting the Lord and then two days later you are frustrated and you're like oh it's not working and Vince, go away go away and is it <laughs> sorry yeah it's trust trusting god is not a standalone virtue so trusting god has to be accompanied with other virtues like prayer because trusting can be very hard for instance if you're in a season of waiting for the healing of someone that you love it can be tested because you're like but you are you created the heavens and the earth all you need to do is speak a word and this person will be healed so why am i having to wait but then you remember that the same bible says all things work together for the good of those that love the lord right and that you have to remember that among the many promises god made he didn't say that everything will go our way the contrary is true he said we would be persecuted we would face many troubles those that get married we face many troubles and that's also in alignment with the word of god but god delights in healing right god delights to see us succeed god god delights in seeing us grow in virtue in the different good virtues god delights to see us grow in the various fruits of this the various fruit of the spirit and that's who god is is a good and loving god and many times the many challenges we experience build our faith so trust is not a standalone virtue it needs other virtues to go along with it like faith like prayer and giving thanks like patience to to know that he will work things out for our good now there's also things that i need to address before closing today's conversation and that's the fact of what what trusting god is not trusting god is not suppressing hurt right and we see that this is true even in the life of david when he was when you read through the psalms you see when he says my soul thirsts for you or you know i am tired don't let my enemies overtake me it didn't mean that he was not trusting god 
trust includes you being honest about what you're going through and where the pain points are trusting god means when you're going through a difficult situation it's an opportunity for you to strengthen your relationship with god when you're going through a difficult situation whether it's pain from a broken relationship a child that's that's behaving in a way that you don't understand a spouse that has that has gone astray trust means going back to god and saying lord this hurts lord i need you even that is an act of trust so trust is not suppressing hurt so trust means going back to god as well and acknowledging that this hurts right so it's not about suppressing emotions a lot of the times you hear believers and how are you i am blessed even if they are hungry and that's not bad that may be an act of faith but it doesn't mean you should suppress the fact that you have a hunger right it's okay to talk to someone you trust it's okay to ask for help when you need it it's okay to say you know what i am hungry i'm hurting it doesn't mean you do not trust god trust is an opportunity for you to strengthen your relationship with people around you it's an opportunity for you to strengthen your relationship with god it's not suppressing it's not not acknowledging that you are going through a difficult time so in summary therefore um we say that trust is a firm belief in the reliability truth or ability of someone or something and this someone in this in this context in which we're having this conversation is god having a firm belief in god's reliability in his truth according to his word in his ability to do what he says he will do and our guiding verse for today was proverbs 5 it was proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 which says trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight and we also talked about trusting god believe begins with knowing who god is and it begins with having first of all a relationship with him through his son the lord jesus christ knowing what his promises are and what his word says knowing that all things he will do for our good and sometimes those things that are for our good don't always feel good but he is faithful knowing that he created us and he knows us more intimately than we even know ourselves and that he yeah his promises are yes and amen and it won't always happen on our timeline but it will be a good timeline and it won't always be an easy process we also talked about trust is not a standalone virtue it must be accompanied by other virtues such as love such as trust such as prayer patience and faith like i said and we also said that trust is not suppressing emotion it's an opportunity for us to go to go back in honesty to god and say this is what i'm feeling this is what i'm going through and surrendering our lives to him knowing that he means well for us and that he is a good good father so i hope those simple tools will help you in your journey to trust in god and knowing that he means well even as we continue to align may we have the correct perspective towards god and what he intends to do hi sharmi thank you for joining me i'm doing it on my hands can you help me i'm not sure what that means hi kampamba wow it is powerful just what i needed to hear thank you so i'm so glad yes like i said at best i can offer a friend on this journey because i don't see myself as a mentor but i just know that when we're pursuing certain things sometimes all we need is a friend on the journey and i hope i can be that for you and uh, thank you for joining and until the next one i have to love and leave you this has been Upe, the mindpreneur and have a beautiful beautiful week ahead